We do export a lot of uh, biomass wood pellets uh, to Europe. These are you know, Georgia pine trees that are going to Europe to create electricity. So I like to tell folks that Georgia is the Saudi Arabia of uh, pine trees. So, um, and then Savannah, we have two facilities, uh, the largest of which is our Garden City Terminal, which is our, our container facility. That facility moves about 85% of our cargo. It's what I want to focus on uh, for most of the speech today. I would be remiss if I didn't tell you all about our economic impact. Uh, this is based on a 2011 study that was done by the Terry College of Business uh, at the University of Georgia. They found that Georgia Ports Authority's uh, business uh, through Savannah and Brunswick uh, generated about 350,000 jobs statewide, uh, about $1.4 billion annually in state revenues, uh, which is uh, about 9% of Georgia's total revenue that year. Uh, and again, no cost to the state on, on our terminals. Uh, but 9% of uh, revenue uh, in return. So it's a really good return on investment. Uh, you see the numbers in terms of total sales throughout the state. Uh, our contribution to the state GDP and $18.5 billion in, in personal income statewide as well. So big impact on the state's economy. Now, we moved the, uh, the equivalent of 3.1 million of these shorter 20-foot boxes uh, in fiscal year 2014. In the calendar of 2014, we moved 3.3 million to EU. So saw a growth between fiscal year and the calendar year. And we're seeing even further growth this calendar year, or this fiscal year as well. Right now, through the first six months of the year, we're at about 13.5% growth year over year. Uh, so we're, we're expecting a, another good year uh, in FY 2015. You see the auto machinery unit numbers there for Brunswick, and largely for Brunswick, uh, moving over 700,000 autos uh, last year. Brunswick is now the, uh, the second largest auto port in the nation. The bulk of our uh, autos are coming through this facility here called Colonel's Island. Colonel's Island's got about 400 acres that is uh, paved and ready for automobiles. We've got an additional 740 acres on the south side of that island available for expansion. So while they are the second largest auto port in the nation, um, they, uh, they have plenty of room to grow. Number one auto port in the nation right now is Baltimore. And uh, if we continue to grow at this rate, we may catch up with them in the, in the very near future. Now, um, no, there, there's the ranking. Now in Savannah, we have, again, two facilities. Uh, we have our ocean terminal facility, which is very important. Uh, it moves a lot of different types of cargo, but most importantly for, for our state, particularly for, for the region down there near Fort Stewart, is it's one of 15 strategic deployment ports for the military. So when the mechanized division of Fort Stewart, when they move their equipment overseas for deployments, they move it through that facility. We also serve Fort Benning, Fort Jackson, Fort Bragg, Fort Campbell, and a couple other ports, uh, forts in the, uh, in the southeast. The larger facility is the uh, Garden City Terminal. This is the largest single container terminal in the nation, both in terms of acreage and in terms of business. Uh, we've got 1,200 acres inside our fence line. And we move more containers through this one terminal than any other single terminal in America. Now, there are three ports that are larger than the port of Savannah. That's LA, Long Beach, and New York, New Jersey. LA and Long Beach have 12 or 13 different terminals whose totals add up to more than what we move through this one. New York's got five or six whose totals move up, you know, move more than just this one. But none of them have a facility that's half the size of this facility. I like to say it's the Hartsfield Jackson of, of uh, container ports. Um, our growth has been uh, quite prolific, as you can see. Um, we've gone from about one and a half million container units in 2003 to three million in 2013. Uh, our average growth rate or compounded annual growth rate is about 7.1 percent. That number will go up this year, obviously, because we're we're growing at a faster rate. Um, if you drop that back to 1998, we moved about 760,000 TEUs. So over a 15 year period, we've quadrupled the amount of cargo that we moved through this facility. Now, um, a big reason for us you know, growing the way we have is, is one, the investment the state's made, but two, our geographic location. We are the westernmost port on the East Coast. Does that make sense? We're one degree west of Pittsburgh, where we sit in Savannah. So we're further inland than many of our peers. So when you move your cargo through Savannah, you don't have to move as far inland to get to your destination or from your origination point to the world. 38 weekly services calling on the port of Savannah from throughout the world going to all parts of the world is, is very interesting. What we're seeing now 
is we're seeing a shift in how cargo moves. You know, the majority of our cargo is going to or from Asia. Uh, today, we've got about 12 or 13 services going through the Suez Canal from, to or from Asia, and only nine services coming to us via the Panama Canal. Five or six years ago, we would have seen 22 services coming through the Panama Canal, and maybe one or two going through the Suez. Ships are getting larger and larger and larger, and they're requiring more depth, more, you know, uh, more opportunities to move, more cargo at a cheaper rate. Panama Canal is limiting that depth and limiting the size of vessels. Suez Canal does not limit them. So they've shifted how they move their cargo, and they're coming east, I'm sorry, west from the Far East instead of east from the Far East. Now, we are working quite diligently on uh, expanding our, our facilities. We've got a plan to spend about $1.3 billion over the next 10 years, um, and that's to grow our capacity to be able to accommodate uh, new opportunities. What we are trying to do is we're trying to take our throughput and grow our capacity so that we have a healthy range between the amount of cargo that we move and the amount of cargo that we're capable of moving. We do have peak seasons. Peak seasons are typically right before Christmas time. And so that's when demand is higher at our facility. And so if we don't have the capability of, of handling a spike in cargo, then we're going to start to see congestion issues. And so we've got to continue to invest so that we don't have those congestion problems. Many of our peers today are having serious congestion problems. Out on the West Coast, they've got a little labor negotiation going on, a contract negotiation. Um, and they're having some problems over there because the, you know, the unions aren't working as fast as, the, as they might. They're slowing down a little bit. They're having serious congestion issues due to the growth of the economy as well. Right now you've got uh, 20 ships. Last week you had 20 ships at anchor waiting to get in to the ports of LA and Long Beach. Beyond that, you had another 20 ships adrift waiting to get in to get to anchor waiting to get in to get into their facilities. So they've got a serious backup there. January is typically a slow time of the year for, for ports, um, as February is as well. In fact, the, the past four out of five days between, you know, over this weekend, uh, the Ports Valley and Long Beach were not receiving new ships. So they were just shut down. And they were trying to clean up some problems that they had that were creating this congestion. So they're having real issues. Uh, new York's getting some weather issues, so ice may be delaying how they move cargo. And even our friends in Norfolk are having some congestion problems as well. And so Savannah, because of this investment that we've been making, is not seeing these same congestion problems. We're not seeing any congestion problems at all. And so as we continue to invest, that will allow us to, to grow more cargo. Last year, our record number of, of auto, or I'm sorry, truck moves or gate moves through our facility was about 8,000 trucks per day. That was our record. A couple of weeks ago, we had two days where we moved 9,700 trucks through, in and out of our facility in a single day. And so we're moving a lot of trucks in and out, accommodating more cargo, accommodating it efficiently and effectively so that all the businesses in the state and in the southeast that rely on us can move their cargo through our facilities and not waste time and not waste money.